On the retro show today. Hi. Oh wow. Just tie one to each of us and Peanut. Um yes. So look at this one. Oh yeah, Kasha. No, this is episode 10, not episode hen. Yeah, there's no chicken lips here. <laughs> oh, hello, chip dippers. <laughs> These are chicken dippers. <laughs> Welcome to the, the Retro, Retro show. show. And I can't believe it has been 10 years of doing this show. Uh, Just no, uh, It's only been 10 episodes, meaning 10 months. Oh, that, yeah, that makes more sense, actually. Well, why don't you tell everybody what the show's about in case they haven't seen us in the last 10 months? Of course. It's about 30 minutes. And it starts with old news. That's old news. Yeah. We have to say Happy New Year to all of you. Um, we're very glad that you enjoyed our Christmas special. If you missed it, watch it next Christmas. Or just now. Yeah. After this. Well, we'll have been going 20 years by then. That's pretty cool. Months. Oh, months. Sorry. I keep forgetting. But thank you, BTTF Car, which stands for Biff Tannen. Biff Tannen, the car activates retro. I can't beat that. Uh, let's see what else is up. Oh, look. So Thalamus Digital. Now, Thalamus, uh, their Careful song. Careful how you say that. Uh, Thalamus are famous, probably most famous now, for Thala Music, which was the song that accompanied Sanction on the Commodore 64. I actually played it in the Nostalgia, Nostalgia episode as, as one of those nostalgic songs. So they were around back in the 80s and they're still around today, which I love. And they said, you asked for C64 games on the Nintendo Switch? I don't remember asking. Did you ask? I did, but I asked Santa, so I don't know how they got it. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Probably will be Sanction for the Switch. Just call it Switch. <laughs> Great minds again. So next up, Emu VR. It's not a virtual reality bird. Isn't okay. it a bird? It's a flightless. The Emu? Yes, yes, it's a smaller version of an ostrich. They lay green eggs. And I previously pronounced it Emu and... Emu. I know. Like a cat. Mew. Mew. That's it. You love cats, huh? Well, Emu VR uh, is now available in beta for the Oculus Quest 2 and PCs and plenty of other VR things. But what is it, you ask? Set the scene. 1984, you come home from school, you throw your backpack on the bed, and you head over to your NES, which loads cartridges this way, not this way. Turn on your old CRT TV. You pick up your cartridge, and what do you do to it? See, he's loaded it correctly, as we oh, all well, know. He hmm? didn't push it down, but I'll let it slide. It, he did let it slide, Fine. that's right. <laughs> and your favorite game? Duck Hunt. Be careful how you say that. Always. And then have a go with your uh, Nintendo light gun. Now, this offers a choice of rooms, different consoles, uh, but it's got all the others. So this was what I had. I never had the NES. I had the mm. SNES, which is behind us in miniature form over there. It's very small. Well, that's plain, OK. And then my favorite, the N64. I had one of those too. Tardar. GameCube, etc., etc. As she goes to her bed, I have a long-term plan. I don't know if anyone from this team is watching, but I, I would love to recreate my childhood bedroom with the Commodore 64 in VR, and then step inside it and take you guys with me in some kind of 360 video way because uh, as you know I did the 3D renderings with Paul Kitchen <laughs> not of my kitchen but of that bedroom so yeah converting those into this and I should be able to step inside that would be the next step literally speaking of next steps
This is brand new from Playmobil. <laughs> it's the, the full kit and it's got, look, Michael, Devin, Devin Miles, that's Devin and Bonnie. And, yeah, no April for some reason. Uh, oh my the gosh. Inside. It's even got the little dot matrix printer and... And no AC. Probably no AC. <laughs> it's hard to put air conditioning in these cars apparently because the dash covers where all the, the vents were. Uh, and if you push it, I think it probably goes... Oh, that's better. <laughs> I've been working on that. And next up, the end. <laughs> so that was it for... Old news. Right, that's old news. Which means it is time for, I see what you mean. I'll see what you mean. You will, because... If you pixelate the picture of Justin Bieber's house a bit, it no, looks... No, hose you. If you pixelate the picture of Justin Bieber's hose you a bit, it looks like it's from the 1999 strategy game. So you know what game they're talking about? I don't know the name, but I did play... SimCity. Which, this isn't like regular SimCity. Which one is that from? This looks like, like Windows... 95 Sim City or something. So I used to love playing The Sims, and I think that's why my generation loves Animal Crossing so much because it's just a much more simplified yet complicated version of The Sims. Why did the animal cross the road? Um, to meep boop meep boop ma. What's that mean? That's how they talk. Oh, the animal crossings. Yes. If anyone doesn't know the answer to the age-old question, let us know below. But sorry, continue. My favorite version was mm. Sim Tower, and oh, yeah. that was my favorite one. I liked Sim Towel. I cleaned up on that game. So, next up. The correct way to hold an N60 for controller. <laughs> you were speaking of N64? I was. Dual dog sense. Speaking of controllers. It's just a little, they look like little eyes. I have to say, out of all of the puppy fractics, the most needy one is this one. And if I'm playing, I mean, I can easily just like me, 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 me. Well, should we see if we can re recreate it? He just loves the attention. I don't have the two eyes though. You can wear it like a hat. There you go. <laughs> Oh, poor little baby. Look how happy he is, though. He is very happy. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just, I guess we'll just carry on like this. Now, do you see the obvious mistake? That's not how ours crashed? Wasn't it XP? Yeah. They showed little windows on top of the blue screen. Yeah. But the blue screen is MS-DOS. Yeah. So there's no windows. <laughs> no. Good pop-up. Yeah. But nice effort. I love the uh, concept there. Last up. Ah, yes. My favorite CPU, the Penguin 4. <laughs> so the listing says, Computer Tower HP with Penguin 4 processor and Windows XP. This is a good computer and has two DVD-R. All I have to say is, is this still available? Penguin. Penguins. And last up, can you make it work? Battle your way through the driver updates and, oh, and registry edits on your quest to defeat the dreaded blue screen of death. See what we did there, tying everything into that other clip. That would be a horrifying arcade game, actually. Oh, shudder at the thought. Yeah, it takes me back and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah. He seems happy though. Good luck to him. And if you can't get it working, maybe a new PCB starting at five bucks will help from... PCBWay! PCB because as we all know, PCB stands for Pretend Crashing Blue Screen, doesn't it? I feel like he originally was leaning in front of a washing machine. Do you know what I mean? Like his pose is like, this isn't that bad. What a tool. 
in that toolbox is quite big. Well, from the blue screen of death to the death of this segment, for this episode at least, that's it for I See What You Meme. I saw what he meant. Oh no, indeed, because it's not really bad news. I'm only doing one unboxing today because this in here is from Fleabay. It is the printer that I had as a kid on my Commodore Amiga. I don't think I ever had it on the Commodore 64. I've been trying to find it for years, the exact model in working order. It should be a Seikosha SP1200 AI. Hi. <laughs> Can you do an energy? Booyakasha. Can you do the snap? Easy now. Respect. So, should I do the whole thing as LG? No. Let's open the box. <laughs> okay. Um, I did already cut it, but I haven't haven't been inside. And for some reason, it came with straps as well. So, just tie one to each of us and. <laughs> Ow. Peanut. Oh, thought you were. Anyway. Um, I hate these things. They get everywhere. Did you know they're edible though? They're like sand. They're actually made of cornstarch. Are all of them or just these in particular? Do you know that? Well, let me, let me just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Go enjoy. And they'll dissolve in water as well. So... And in dog bellies. As we can demonstrate, right here. Take the lid off this. Mm -hmm. Just kidding, that's trick photography. Ah, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh -huh. Pretty well packed. <laughs> oh, it's in really good condition. I can tell which part of it, like, was in the shade versus what was in the sun. Yeah. Oh, wow. There you go. Seiko Shep SP1200. Hi. That is three or four years of my teens printing uh, letter upon letter from my Commodore Amiga. So I think what, what we'll do for fun, I'll hook this up right now to the Amiga, the Amiga. <laughs> and I'll load up one of those old pictures that I actually have on my old hard disk. And I'll print it again. Right now? Right now. Ready? Yeah. Set? Yeah. Go! Okay, let's go. Welcome. to choose an image to print all from my original teenage hard disk when I was about 18. Hmm, uh, well, I guess nobody's looking. Let's see what I considered to be gorgeous back when I was a young man. Hmm, seemed to be some kind of American looking blue eyed, dark haired girl. Hmm, clearly out of my league. Well, maybe one day, I suppose. Wait a minute, she, she looks familiar. I guess dreams really do come true sometimes. By that, I'm referring, of course, to getting my childhood printer back. Yeah, well, from that load of nonsense to a load of crystal balls. So we finally pick an image to print.
whilst I'm really pleased that everything about this printer worked and worked the way that I remembered it worked, I think we can probably agree that it at least needs a new ribbon. Yeah, the ink on this one has understandably dried up. And would you believe that companies like this one make brand new ribbons for 30 year old printers to this day? In fact, you can even find new ones on Fleabay. Needless to say, I've ordered a pack and once it's installed, my balls will never have looked better and there'll be plenty to write home about. But now, let's see what you've written in about as we look at the community's home brews. It is time for home brews. Mm. Mm. And first up, this is from Kim Tezcan, friend of the channel. Mm -hmm. He's featured uh, a lot of things in a lot of our videos. Has made these 8-bit sabers. I made a conceptual study to combine the plastic design of three 8-bit consoles, which are the Atari 2600, the Commodore 64, and the Nintendo Entertainment System. Here they are. I love this. Um, yes. The NES one is my favorite because that was my console. Obviously, I'll go for the Commodore 64 one. Obviously. Uh, and look at this. Look at the detail. Do you want to see my lightsaber? That's what she said. Sure. So she's going to be our new co-presenter while Lady Frack takes away. So look at this one. This is the Atari 20... Yeah, you can see it there too. Atari 2600 one. And look at this one. That's the NES. Yeah. Sorry, we just... We, she's just standing. Wow. Luckily that wasn't on. Just would have cut my shoulder off. So, where did you get this? I got this at Savi's workshop at Galaxy's Edge. On the planet Batu. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was your birthday present? Yes. From? You. Father Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to fire it up? Who am I? <laughs> Luke Skywalker Oops. looking down the barrel of the loaded gun. I know. He doesn't like it. It's okay. I'll use the force. Ready? Do you want to do it with me? No, okay. Why oh, don't like it? I think Puppy Fractic the second has used his mind control because he's scared of it to make it not work. I have a picture of me in front of the Millennium Falls. Apparently you had batteries in it at that point. Batu Wreath. Batu Wreath. <laughs> She's too good. Oh, and you can see here the design cues that he's taken. Moving on, this is from Andreas Matur, and he started designing his own retro computer case. This is 3D printed. Can you tell there's a seam I, down the middle? Yeah. You seam what I mean. I seam what you're pointing out. Uh, this obviously is Commander X16 flavored, and his hope is that one day the X16C, which is going to be the third generation, of that, we'll be able to go inside here. That's the more Raspberry Pi sized one. You couldn't fit the first phase yeah. in here. Be too big. It was a big boy. That's what she said. Yes. Um, here is a, a nicer view. And you are planning a video of something similar, right? Yeah, I'm going to be 3D printing a retro computer. Is it a specific type or more like generic like this? You're going to have to wait and find out. Ah, secret. Well, either way, love this. Um, the X16 is currently awaiting parts due to this chip shortage, uh, which might take another nine or to 12 months. Or retro show episodes. No, that's years. Oh, no, it was months. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> then next up, and finally, we have from Gaz Marshall, TJ's Cavern Capers. TJ? Yeah, he's a YouTuber, TJ Ferreira. Uh, he also hosts a Facebook group called Sinclair Society. Pardar, ZX, Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Mm -hmm. And this is the game that Gaz made as a little tribute to TJ. You have to help TJ collect the beers in his cavern. The music is composed by DJ Max. Hi. You know what else Gaz Marshall made that you have? I do. I should be wearing it now. Nice work, Gaz Marshall, for this that and the other. All right, as I put my new earring on, there is an earring, isn't it? No. Oh, you got, bought me two of those. Bought you like four of them. Didn't I get you that one? It fell off my ear and landed on my torso. Oh. 
Goodbye, TJ. Goodbye, TJ. And move on to the final segment. Would you like a nice, delicious bowl of nostalgia flakes? Mmm. Mm. Puppy Practic always seems to end up uh, at this point in the show, standing there facing us. Just staring. Just staring into our souls. Someone who also has a soul. That's a terrible segue. <laughs> Could be anyone. This is Rich. I mean the boy, not the not the tone of the content. Uh, he says, I'm just as nostalgic as the two of you and fondly look back on memories of computers of yesteryear. Love the shows. While looking through the family photo collection, I was very happy to discover this photo of me playing my newly acquired Sega Mega Drive on Christmas morning, 1993. Square TVs, top-loading VCRs, and orange socks. Those were the days. Those were the days. Happy New Year, says Rich. And this is from Tim Morgan. Okay, so Christmas Day 2021. The big sister just got an Acer Chromebook for Christmas. She looks delighted by it. She's texting all her friends. What is the little brother Tegan going to get for Christmas? So Tegan Morgan... I think we can all relate to this and remember when we had similar Christmases uh, opening something very special. Holy! Holy! Thanks! Thanks. Oh, well, let's see what it is. we're going to have to bleep something out then. <gasps> oh, that's that, that icing, okay. 40 years later, kids still it's opening Commodore 64s. It's a thick boy! See, it's a big boy. What's the name? Commodore 64. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not right now, not right now. Tegan, guys, this is the weapon that had his house. That's why he got you the but, screen. Exactly, but he did get to open it. Oh. And here's Tim and Tegan. Uh, and that's Tim with his C64C. And Tegan has the bread bin. The bread bin. Father and son. Yeah. yeah he's got his, he's looking cool, got his sunglasses his Maxi and his joystick. And the program seems to say 10 print Chris. Oh no, <laughs> it's actually character string with a dollar sign. I thought it was a message to me for a second. Yeah. I was getting excited. And then finally, here is Ross Lee. And he's sending a wonderful photo of his son, Matthew, sitting in one of the screen used Knight Rider cars, aged three. It was taken in 1985 in New Zealand. I seem to remember this, they sent one of the cars to New Zealand for a tour. I think it was for Shell or BP. Mm. And there's a new commercial, isn't there? Featuring Kit. As the car of the future from NBC's Knight Rider, I've been inspiring STEM students competing in Future Rider, the new Shell Eco Marathon Challenge. So how will their cars of the future compare? Shell uh, doing a promo using Kit, but they didn't use William Daniels' voice, which is a shame. That is a shame. Because he's still... (laughs) Very active. They didn't want to pay his fee. Well, if you saw the... His Feeny. Mr. Feeny. Uh, if you saw my recent Night Rider episode, William Daniels actually sent me a very special message in that, which is very touching. Um, check it out if you missed it. Now, I just want to interrupt you. A lot of California residents have a very similar photo like this growing up because for many years, Kit was at Universal Studios Hollywood. And I have vague memories of me sitting in a car with a weird dash and it was beep bopping and making noise. And at the time I was very, very young and I didn't know what it was. But as soon as I see pictures like this, I instantly go back to that memory. And maybe there's a photo of me somewhere too. It's one of those primordial memories that I referenced Mm -hmm. recently. Yeah, and of course, it's even more special because it was filmed at those same studios. It was. So they didn't have to drive the car very far to put it on display when the show got axed. But yeah, there are rumors of a new Knight Rider movie. You mean a new, new Knight Rider movie? Hopefully better than the Knight Rider 3000 movie, which was the one with Justin Turing, whatever his name was. So that's the one that I remember. I don't remember oh, the, the show. The show, yeah. yeah. Well, I was so excited when that was gonna come out because I loved cars. My father was a mechanic growing up. Mustangs were my favorite car at the time. So to have this really cool car show with my favorite car, and, and I, I wasn't so butthurt that it wasn't a Firebird, because you know, it ended up being my favorite car, but it didn't do very well. And 
it got the axe also. It did. I think they did two seasons as well. The the pilot was really good and showed a lot of promise. And then episode two or three, I was like, okay, no, thank you. I've said this many times to many people, and I'll say it again in case any of the producers that are making the new movie are watching. If Kit is not a black trans am firebird and doesn't look like Kit, it, nothing's going to succeed. My yeah. writer, if Kit's got to look like Kit. Um, I'll say that until the day they make the movie correctly. And if you guys want to use any of my footage from the recent episode, <laughs> I think I could work that out as well. What if they made it a Tesla? It's got to be Kit. Just, you know, because you're making a Tesla. Although I'm turning my Tesla <laughs> into Kit, as far as sitting down and watching yeah. a show. The movie magic, they can figure it out. And it's got to be David. He's, David Hasselhoff's got to be in there in, in some prominent form as well. He had the rights to make the movie for several years and he said he couldn't get a bite, like nobody was interested. It's impressive how nobody cares and nobody's interested and all of a sudden Shell and Playmobil and... and it keeps popping up and Retro Recipes and all these... Yeah. <laughs> it keeps popping up and it will, will continue to. It's just, it was just that cool. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our show. As we drive off into the sunset, we just want to thank you for watching. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> it went in my eyes. Thank <laughs> you.